in the last video about getting your LR and ER and then the percent yield of the reaction, we ended up with this problem on your screen in which your aluminum reacted with chlorine gas producing your aluminum chloride. And you notice that the equation is already balanced. And then we were able to identify our LR and ER based on the mass to mass calculation because we're given two masses and we need to calculate for the mass of aluminum chloride because it's being asked in B. And then from there, we know that the B is already our theoretical yield. And then we were able to calculate for the percent yield in letter C, given the actual amount of aluminum chloride, which is 35 grams. And then here are our answers. There's another additional question, which is on part D. Let us read this. It says, how much of the excess reactant remains after the limiting reactant has been completely consumed? Now, Take note that in part D, we are focusing our attention to the excess reactant because we know that the excess reactant will not all be completely consumed in the reaction. Only the LR will all be used up. But the, a portion of your ER will only be used while another portion will be the surplus. So let's bank on our calculations and we were able to find out that Cl2 which is, you know, 35.0 grams Cl2, will all be consumed but 10 grams of aluminum because Al is the ER, not all the 10 grams will be used up. So we have to know how much exactly was used for Al so that we can subtract it from your 10 grams and then we would know and we would be able to answer letter D, how much of that excess reactant remains after all the 35 grams will be consumed. So to approach this problem, it's just very logical. We have to know how much does chlorine, our LR, need from your ER. Are you following with me? So it's going to be that we need to have a conversion from 35 grams Cl2 2 grams aluminum. And that answer will tell us that that is the amount that, that will react with your 35 grams of chlorine. And we would expect that amount to be less than 10 grams. Correct? Now, that's going to be a very simple stoichiometry calculation because it's just going to be a mass-to-mass -mass calculation. But our mass will be from our... Let me show that from our 30, sorry, from our 35.0 grams Cl2 to knowing the grams of aluminum that will be needed. So our calculation is from our LR amount to our ER so that we will really know how much really is the amount. So it's a mass to mass calculation. So no problem. Let us now show this solution now. So we have 35.0 grams of Cl2. So molar mass of Cl2 first, which is 70.9 grams of Cl2 for every one mole Cl2. Next is we have to go back to our chemical equation. What is the mole ratio between Cl2 and AR? So let's go back. We know now that it is 2 is to 3. So the 3 for Cl2 should be below because we need to cancel out Cl2. So that's 3 moles of Cl2 for every 2 moles of Al. And then this will be followed by the molar mass of our Al which is 27, around 27 grams. So that's 27.0 grams Al. And of course, it's molar mass, so that's one mole of Al. So this is going to be our mass-to-mass -mass calculation because we can cancel out gram Cl2, mole Cl2 will cancel out, mole Al cancel out, and we get a gram Al. And so in putting all of this in the calculator, grouping the numerator, and then divide by another group of the denominator equal sign, you will get the answer to be 8.89 grams of Al. 
Now, what this 8.89 grams AL, this is just the amount of AL that reacted with 35.0 grams of your limiting reactant chlorine. And as what we have expected, it should be less than 10 grams, correct? So how do we now know how much remains after the reaction? How much of your ER aluminum will remain after the reaction? So simple. Begin with the amount that you were given in the problem, so which is 10.0 grams, and you know that not all the 10 will be used up. So you subtract it with the actual amount that was needed or that was used up in the reaction with Cl2. So subtract it with 8.89 grams Al, and so you would get the excess to be 1.11 grams Al. So this is actually the amount of Al that remains remains after the reaction. So I hope you got the computation here. I hope that it's easier and I hope you're able to logically follow the trend here. So from knowing our LR, which is completely consumed, then we can figure out how much of the ER really remains after the reaction by knowing first how much is the amount needed by your LR to the ER which is always less than to the amount given in the problem. And then right after that, you subtract it from the mass of the ER given in the problem to the amount of that reactant that was actually used in the problem. And then the difference will be the amount that is in excess after the reaction. So please remember the process here. So this is the entire, entire problem solution for this particular problem on ERLR percent yield and then excess reactant. So again, same technique. Please on your previous notes when you wrote this, please continue this again with the fourth question on getting the ER's um, excess amount and then continue with your drills and practices in your textbook and then continue to ask your teachers if ever there are some things that will confuse you. Thank you so much. Bye for now. This has been Madam Narka saying don't stop learning, relearning, and unlearning. Please like, share, subscribe, and I mean just, just let other people who are struggling with chemistry watch these videos. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.